Hey everyone, this is Vicki from Messy Table Studio. I'm here with a little voiceover for the first couple sections on the video because I don't know what happened, but I lost them and I tried to turn the volume up and they were gone. I am, and it's a little out of order, but what I'm doing is I'm measuring, um, I think it's computer paper that is just folded in half. So I took um, a Canson watercolor paper or a mixed media uh, tablet, the front and the back, and I, I'm going to make a book with them. So that's the measurement of the for the front and the back. And then I'm writing the measurement on another piece that I cut. The width, it'll, it'll be the eight and three-fourths inches by two and a half inches. That will be the spine. So I'm using things that I have. I didn't buy anything to make this. And this is the front cover to the Canson. Uh, I don't know if it was mixed media or watercolor paper. So I'm cutting another piece the same size as the other one that I held up in the beginning. I do like T-squares, but they do tend to move in their plastic, and I have cut the edges off of a few of them. I'm really confused at this point, and I, you will understand when the vo my voice starts in the next one. I'm measuring them because I'm like, why does this not fit? Why is this not the same size? And the explanation <laughs> will happen when the voiceover is finished. So I'm remeasuring, and I'm going to cut another piece that is the same size as the one I held up to the camera because I put it up to the front cover and for some reason it didn't match. Wait till you see. Wait till you hear what I did. I am such a goober. <laughs> so I'm just trimming it off so I make sure that it's nice and smooth and even. Of course it never is, but I think it is when I'm doing it. Then I go back and look at it. I hold it up and I shake it and measure it and take a look. Is it okay on the sides and the top and the bottom? And I'm like, okay, it's pretty good. Looks all right. I can, I can do this. All right, here comes the voice part that explains <laughs> why I'm such a goober. I hope you enjoy the video. See you guys later. Bye. Now that I've cut the front and the back and had a little half inch mishap and the spine to the book and the reason I'm making this a three piece spine is because I don't want to do Coptic stench but I do want my book to open nicely so I'm going to get Tyvek or that book tape that was given to me. And I thought for a second that I had lost my marbles because I know I measured the front and back and the spine to the journal. Well, the spine's fine. It's two by eight and three-fourths. And then I cut um, this one, which is, uh, what is it? Five and three-quarter, three-quarters by eight and three-fourths. Then I cut one of these, and I wrote it down there and held it up to the camera so you could see the measurements. Oops, sorry about the shadow here. Okay, so I did that. And then when I put them together, I'm like, well, they're a little off. Why is the measurement not the same? Um, guess what? <laughs> I picked up the wrong one. But as it has turned out, I shaved a little off. And um, I have two of the same size. Didn't need to cut this one. But I have two of the same thickness. So I'll put this one away. But I will use this because this is um, already cut and it's good and sturdy. So then I'm going to take some uh, book tape that was gifted to me by a friend and I'm going to tape this together and leave a little gap. Now I, when I cut some of the stuff off I ended up with a little piece like this. Wait, where is it? Like this one. This one's skinnier. And I'm thinking I might let's see, two and a half I might put this in here to space it out.
and tape this and then put it in here and tape it again so that it has a ton of bendable space in the book. I don't know if I really need that much or not. I can't decide what the right thing to do is. I could turn it this way, but for me, this doesn't seem like, you know, this is like a millimeter, a millisecond. <laughs> it's like no space. I, I don't think that's enough for a book that might develop alligator mouth. So I'm thinking I probably should hang with this. Put this here. Make sure they're on the line on here. And then put this on the line. I'm sorry this looks crooked. I've done everything I can think of to make this look straight. But it doesn't matter what I do. I think it's because I have other stuff in front of me here. You know, this that's not straight. And then I base everything else off of this. And just kind of goes downhill from there. All right, so I think what I will do is I will go ahead and cut or put the book tape and then I'll peel that off of it and then put it on this side and then do that side. Let me go fetch the tape. This is the roll that was gifted to me minus probably a couple yards off of it. All right, it's sticky on one side, the shiny side, and then the flat side has string running through it in diagonals to give it more strength. And this is a big, huge honk and roll, and I'm so excited I have it. So, what I need to do is, I need to take some of this and cut a couple pieces off, because I have to wet this. I'm gonna cut off one piece and then duplicate it. And then cut off the second one. Let me go let the dog out. I'll be right back. I did back. not measure these. I just kind of eyeballed it up and down, and I cut four pieces because I want one piece on the front and the back on both of these pieces. I realize now, after shutting off the camera and thinking about it for a couple seconds while I'm messing around with the dogs, that if I wet the back of this and stick it on there, this is going to be a problem. So I am going to have to figure out a way to pick it up gingerly and make sure it doesn't stick. I'm trying to line this up with the lines on the board to make sure the bottom of my book is even. Not that it really makes a difference because it's just for me, but still, you know, anything worth doing is worth doing well, right? Oop, there we go. Okay, so there's got to be a better way to do this and I have to figure this out. This does not look even on that end, so let's try it this way. There we go. I guess I can move that out of the way. I don't need that. And that will give me a place to wet this. So I'm just using... <laughs> okay, I'm not going to lie. I'm using dirty paint water. <laughs> really, seriously, it's just dirty paint water. What's the point, right? Can't pour too much of that down my septic tank, so... Got to use it one way or the other. Oh, that just moved it just a hair. Okay, so I guess we'll go like this and pray that it's as even as it can be. Flip her over. I'm going to wet it a little bit more on the end. Whoop. Just to make sure I got it in place. And I'm going to mash that in there because the book is going to be opening and closing probably like 50,000 times because I take forever to make up my mind about certain things. All right, put this down. Whoops, let's do it even. And then run the paintbrush down here. It works just as well as anything else. You don't need fancy tools every single time. All right, so I'm gonna take this one and wet it with same dirty paint water. <laughs> It works, right? And it's my favorite color green, so it's fine. Just fine. And then I'll put this over here. And then this is where I will go like this. And make sure it's in there very well. 
and then flip her over again. Oops. Do a little quick dibble and over again and do this again. All right. I have to admit, I think Tyvek is a lot easier. <laughs> All right, so there we have it. It moves back and forth. And it's good and sturdy because it has those extra strings running through it. So there's that. And then it has a little bit extra strength on the top and the bottom. And then I'll cover it up with some kind of paper or cloth or something for the cover. Right now, all I'm worried about is just getting this on the other side. All right, so I'm going to put this, and I'm going to line it up with the grid. I know you can't see this, and I can't push it up far enough that it'll it'll work. So I'm just going to push this down, or lay this down on the grid. Put this in the middle. I'm going to have to scoot this down a tad. Is that straight? Yep. Okie do. And then I'm going to put this and then put it on the same line and hope that um, it's right. <laughs> it makes me so nervous. All right, so I'm going to push my finger down on those. I'm going to wet this. I don't remember. I know I've used this in the past, this tape in the past on another book, but I can't remember how I got it wet. I know I didn't lick it. That's just way too wide a space. And in the time of COVID, probably not a smart idea either. Although I've had this way before COVID hit. I had, you know, this was sent to me ages ago. Like, I don't know. I wonder if it's been a year. All right, we're going to flip her over. Dab will do. Up the bottom. Give it a quick rub in. Whoops. Now, the only thing that this might do, because I did double thickness on it, it may be a little, the cover may look, I mean, you may be able to see where the tape is. I'm not really sure. I haven't done this in a long time. So I'm just rubbing the bottom here. Trying to get it to stick to make sure it's in there, in the crevice. All right, now we're gonna do this one. This is my um, all-purpose brush here. Except for watercolor, I don't use this on watercolor. I have watercolor brushes strictly for watercolor. Everything else is kind of a crapshoot, right? All right, let's flip her over. I'm hoping that by baking this three-piece book, I've made them in the past, that I will have plenty of room with doing, you know, a lot of space between the spine and the front cover and the back cover. As much as I like alligator mouth, it does have to open and close with ease. All right, make sure that's glued down. And there we have it. All right, so that'll be lovely. Oops. I'm going to leave it to dry, possibly overnight, although since I'm not a patient person, <laughs> I say that with a grain of salt. All right, so it does look pretty even. Yeah, all right, so some of it's coming up, so I need to, I think I need to smush the paintbrush water under there a little bit. And get it to adhere. Let's see, that's okay on one side. Let's make sure we're good on the other. Well, well this side looks okay. 
Oh, did a little bit under here. Oh, there we go. Ooh. All right, so it really needs to do. It really needs to sit overnight to make sure this sticks really well. So that means, in the meantime, I will work on the guts. All right. So I've already selected paper, and I've already done sewing and using the walnut stain, Tim Holtz walnut stain on it. So here might be my first signature. I'm not really sure what order my signatures are going to go in. There are three signatures and the spine is two and a half inches so I have room for expansion. Right, this is just coffee dye deli paper with um, a napkin. You know how you wet the napkin and pull the layers apart. I did that because I love hydrangeas. And then this is uh, I don't know if it's Tattered Angels or Seven Gypsies spray of some sort on a sheet pan from Dollar Tree. The aluminum ones, and they're the ones that leave in the lovely waffle pattern. And I did sew and then did the edges. I'm not going to do the back part of the book. Seems to me it's a waste of ink. I did some straight stitching, eight inches, I mean, eight stitches to an inch, and I did some of the um, zigzag. This is was already pre-sewn and it's just glued on the edge of the page. While I was making other stuff for the idea book, both the red one and the brown one and the black and white one, I fiddled around with uh, the um, envelopes where you piece them together and then you make the envelope. So it's sewn everywhere on here. Cool envelope. All right, there's nothing in here. So I've been working on them a little bit watching TV. This is just a coffee dyed doily or a painted doily or some kind that was dipped in paint water. This is another dyed paper. This might have been uh, P.H. Martin or it could have been Del Roney. I don't know what. I don't, you know, I did these a while ago, so I honestly don't remember how I did them. This was a um, very thin, tissuey book page, so I folded all the edges around and then cut the little notches out to give it a little more stability and it was jelly printed. All right, so there's that. I don't know. Oh, yes, I just did this. I found this in the bin of leftover scrapbook paper and this was one of the ideas that came out of the idea book and I really like doing these except for when you do it the opposite way, the writing is upside, might be upside down on one and right side, oh, they're both right side up. Mm, okay, well, that worked out well. <laughs> Okie do. Anyway, I zigzagged around them and then I put the ink on them and then I just glued the three out of four sides. Oh, and I do not have a two inch um, punch, so Y'all don't make fun of me. Let me show you how I make my stuff. Hang on. This is the end of um, some red tape, the red score tape. So I just take it and I have it marked here how deep I want to go. If it's just this deep, the marks go this way up to here to the line. And I cut it out on the back. I mean, I take a pencil and do the mark on the back side of the paper. And then I cut it out with scissors. <laughs> You make do when you have to. And all these little divots were done the exact same way. Although this piece right here is one flat out piece. When I fold it together, I did do the double divot. But these little skinny pieces, they were done one at a time. And as you, you can tell, because not quite lined up with this. I don't care. It will still hold stuff. All right, so the rest of this is just coffee or tea dyed paper. This is something that I made when I was doing the idea book. It's a pocket, and there's one of the journal cards that I made that was featured that I featured on Instagram, so it fits nicely in there. Then I had sewn on another page, half of a page, on here. Took a half inch fold, put it on there, and then sewed kind of down the fold. Although I don't think I. Most of it should be like over here and it's right on the fold. Yeah. This is one of those um, window pockets that I saw. I've seen so many people make these. I can't even begin to tell you how many people, different people are doing these. Um, I saw 
Roxy Creations, Rachel at Roxy Creations. I've seen uh, Julie at Camellia C uh, Crafts Design. I saw, um, what's her name? Oh my gosh. She lives in Montana. Holy crow. Gail. August Augustinelli. Augustinelli. She done it. I mean, it, and, you know, I've seen a lot of people do it. So I made some. This is just coffee dyed deli paper. I sewed around the edges and then I stamped a, a rubber stamp on it with black ink. And then that's where the back side of that is. And then this closes. Then there's a pocket on the back that has deli paper and you should never glue. I learned the hard way, don't glue. Use tape because this glue, which I thought would be invisible, is not. But it's mine, my journal, so it's okay. Then this is another journal card that was on Instagram when I was doing the um, iCads. There's that, and then there's the back side. So it's a journal card. That's it. And then there's the pink paper, and then I just put a napkin applique type thing on the back of um, irises. This has got to be the most common napkin that I see at Tuesday morning and Dollar Tree. I think everybody who has napkins has this pattern. And I really like it. All right, so the next one is off of a serviette napkin. So it's round, it had scalloped edges. It was folded in fourths when it was gifted to me. So I cut out a pie wedge of it and then took off. I didn't want the hummingbird on there because the hummingbird overlapped the fold and I didn't want that. So I did the water around it and there's part of the hummingbird on there. I couldn't get rid of that. And then just, you know, use napkin glue on that. Again, with the ruffle, and it's just glued on there. This is also a napkin, but it was a long, skinny napkin. So that on here, this is the uh, coffee dyed paper doily. And then all the zigzag stitching. This is yet from another napkin. I wanted to use up the napkins that people have given to me, and I've swapped, and I never use them on anything. It's so silly. All right, let's see what else is in here. I don't remember what I've done to what signature, but they're going to be sewn in the book. And then I'll work on them, or anything that folds in or fat, any of that is going to be done in advance, and then I will do some of the innards after I sew it into the book. Okay, I think that, oh, nope. Is there anything in there? Nope. No. All right, so this is the tissue paper, the deli paper. And I love sunflowers, and I tried to coordinate the dyed paper that would, you know, look good over here. This is the back side of something. I might have to cover that up with a, some kind of a yellow print. This is a journal card that has a little B and a sewn, a sewn material. Actually, it's one of my bed sheets that's ripped up. Um, and it is done in a pleat, and I just sewed down the middle. This is, um, I bought this, gosh, years and years ago. And I just saved the file and keep printing them off. I printed a whole bunch of them on a um, cardstock, white cardstock. And then, you know, aged it, cut it out, and sewed around it. The back side... That's the, I think this is the last one of the sunflower I have. I love this thing. I am crazy about these sunflowers. Oh, well, some of it's coming up on the edges. I need to glue down. This is also a pocket. What can I put in there to prove that? Not smart. Anyway, you can <laughs> so there's that one. This is the last signature. There are three. Again, this is a napkin on coffee dyed deli paper. This is a rooster off of, off of a napkin. I do like the roosters. They, they are wonderful. And this is a double-sided paper clip. I saw that either Corey Dahman or Roxy Creations or Juliet Camellia or Gail. I mean, they all kind and Tracy Fox too, I think. They all do this kind of stuff. And it's a paper clip in between. And you just take this and 
so you have something nice to look at from both sides. Putting it here, I won't see that, but there we go. So I put that there for now. This is again one of those Franken envelopes that you sew the pieces together and then you use your envelope, um, that envelope board. Who makes it? Uh, we are memory keepers envelope board and I just use the measurements off of there and cut it. I think this might be a six by six square. I can't remember. I did this two or three months ago. All right, and again, dyed paper with sewing. This is another napkin. I do love the way that looks. I'd like to live there. All right, more dyed paper, dyed paper. This is, again, the same thing that was on the one of the others where I was talking about everybody has the same napkin. This is, again, a section of that napkin, same napkin. I don't think, I don't know, is there anything else? Oh, there you go. I got these beautiful napkins with their four different leaves on it. So I decided to put two of the leaves on the back of a short page. I just love the way they look with the coffee, the coffee dye paper. I love these leaves. Then this came off, I think that same napkin or a napkin of some kind with a little, oops with a little tiny village. Sort of like the other one I said I like to go live there. Same type situation. It's just a beautiful village with lots of tall trees. So then I made the, I sewed again, only this time it was a little bit better than last time. I got a little closer to the edge. As I was saying, uh, my sewing got much better over here, the zigzag. I got a little closer to the end to make sure it's a little more even. Although, you know, it's not the greatest sewing job ever. Made a little pocket here, like I did in previous ones. Just folds over. And there's another page done. More paper. And that is it. That's what I've gotten done so far, is bits and pieces on all three signatures. And I've used a lot of muted colors because that's what I like. And since this is for me, that's what I'm going to use. Um, I'm going to put more stuff in here. Let me this. I think that two and a half inches probably is just fine for a book this size. If you look at the ends, I think I scoot this one a little bit over. I'll fold the paper and do the whole dividing up sort of thing into thirds and that way, you know, it'll sit in here nicely and then there'll be room to grow. There's going to be a lot of space in between them, I think. But there are nine pieces of paper doubled in all three of the signatures. So that's 27 sheets. I did not count the deli paper stuff. I only counted the sheets of paper that were dyed and sewn. Um, I'll have to figure out how many pages I have in here. If you want to know how to do that, to figure out how many pages you actually have in your books, you need to watch the video by Natasha Treasure Books. She shows you how to do the math. It's very quick. You can use a calculator if you don't really like to add in your head, but it's the calculation is really good. I will link the video below so that you can see it. She has a really good video where she answers all kinds of questions that people who watch her videos um, ask her. And one of the things they ask her is, how many signatures do you put in the book? They ask her, how much does um, a journal cost? They, she just answers all kinds of great questions. And one of the things she answers is, how do you count the pages? So it's a really good video. You should really go watch it. All right, everybody, I think that's it for now. I'm going to have to let this dry because I don't tr I'm going to walk away so I don't start to try to cover it and it's not dry. I'll work in these while I'm waiting for this to dry overnight. And I love how it lays flat. So that means when I'll go to open it to work on it, it will lay pretty flat. All right, everybody, thanks for enduring the dogs barking. I'm sorry. <laughs> my neighbor was out walking her dog and it makes my dogs come unglued. And then I'm peeking out the blinds so she thinks I'm a nosy neighbor. <laughs> it just snowballs from there. All right, I'll see you guys in the next video. Thanks, everybody, for watching and hanging in. Bye.